I'm Aubrey Ruby, and I'm a senior fellow at the Africa Center at the Atlantic Council. And today I'm so glad to be joined by Sheba Phillip, the CEO of Ecola. Sheba, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Sheba, tell us about Ecola. What do you do? Yeah, so Ecola is a luxury jewelry brand that is focused on championing women, particularly in Eastern Africa. Akola means she works in uh, many of the Bantu languages in Uganda. And it was founded 12 years ago by Brittany Underwood. And the vision of Akola was to create sustainable job creation for women who are the most marginalized within Uganda. So we formed the company 12 years ago as a nonprofit. Uh, now we are a commercial jewelry brand uh, selling all across the U.S. And today we employ uh, 181 women in extreme poverty in our manufacturing location in Jinja, Uganda. That's fantastic. So tell us a little about the impact that this uh, project and this company has had on those women's lives. Yeah. So, you know, we believe that, like I said, job creation is the pathway out of poverty. Uh, and what we at Ecola, we don't just provide a source of income and a job, but also the holistic services through a nonprofit partner, Ecola Academy, which walks alongside of these women to help them think through the impact of what it means to work. So, for example, uh, they, they're given full employment at Ecola we're given access to services such as how to open up a bank account, how to start a small business with the income that they're generating, how to make sure that they're saving enough income uh, to, to care for their children. So today, what we're finding with the women we employ is that we are that they're beating the odds and are beating the national averages within Uganda. So our women uh, that work for COLA are educating their children at a greater rate than uh, the average Ugandan. They're owning land and homes uh, at a greater rate than the average Ugandan woman. Uh, and they're starting businesses and they're holding positions in their communities, uh, leadership positions in their communities, which is tremendous. And what I mean by beating the odds, 77% of the women we employ consider themselves as being sole providers of their families. So they are raising um, not only themselves, but they're caring for up to six dependents in their homes. So these are women that have otherwise would, have not, would not have a sustainable source of income to help them. So this is a tremendous impact that we're creating, again, through the work of Ecola, through employment, and through the social services that we, pro we provide through a nonprofit partner, Ecola Academy. So Ecola has received support from the USDFC or formerly OPIC. So tell us about how that partnership works, the kind of support you receive and what it means for your business. Yeah, it's been tremendous. We're so grateful for the partnership of the DFC and what they're doing to advance the vision of Ecola within Eastern Africa and particularly in Uganda. You know, their support is really around, I think, three things. The first is on um, kind of long-term infrastructure uh, and, and capital expansion. So we as a COLA want to expand our manufacturing operations in Uganda so we can employ more women and help and, and really help fuel a, a global kind of economy within Uganda and particularly within the manufacturing sector. So the DFC's investment is to help us do capital expansion. So really expand our manufacturing operations, our facilities and our infrastructure. Also, what I mean by infrastructure, they really help secure private investment. So when you can see a, a beautiful partnership between the DFC and private investment to help grow a cola, having the DFC invest in a cola provides tremendous credibility for the company, which has allowed us to have um, a great uh, sort of stream of private impact investors as well that are coming alongside of Ecola. So again, you know, the first thing is really infrastructure and, and helping us secure both capital expansion and private investment. Uh, the second thing I would say is it's really helped us ensure uh, we are continuing our, our operations and our, and our, within Uganda, particularly during COVID. So when, when there was a time where many companies were furloughing their employees, letting go of, of employees, 
the DFC partnered with us to ensure that we could use their investment to keep all of our operations moving forward with, within Uganda. So this is, um, you know, keeping our wages intact, keeping our day-to-day -day production operations intact. So because of the DFC investment, we have not let go or we have not laid off a single woman that's employed by Ecola, both in Dallas as well as in Uganda. So we're very, very appreciative of their support in keeping our women employed in Uganda. And then the last- and how did the relationship really come to be? I mean, how did you get on their radar? How did you find a way forward in terms of becoming visible to the DSC? Yeah. Well, the D, it was a, it's kind of a long story, but uh, a little over a year and a half ago, uh, one of the former um, executives of the DFC uh, met Brittany and heard about the story of Acola and why Acola was so different because we were not only uh, just trying to employ women in Africa, but we're creating a luxury brand mm -hmm. coming out of Africa, handcrafted by women that are the most marginalized and creating beautiful designs using local sustainable materials that are not only helping these women stay employed, but fueling the local Ugandan economy. When, we, when they heard about the story, when he heard about the story, it opened up the opportunity to meet the DFC team. I joined the company uh, March of last year as a CEO to help restructure the company from a nonprofit to a for-profit. And that's when we started the diligence process with the DFC. So it's been a long built relationship over the course of almost a year and a half. Uh, and we closed our investment with the DFC earlier this year. That's fantastic. And it really shows that it's those people to people ties that move things forward in Absolutely. so many cases. Absolutely. And I will say, you know, to that point, the DFC has provided infrastructure, they provided obviously the resources to uh, keep our women employed, but it's also the partnership and the relationship. They've been incredibly responsive to our questions, or, you know, they've had great thoughts about how to grow the business and think strategically about expanding the business and the mission. So we see them as true business partners and, and partners in this mission. And you really fit in the mission of the 2X uh, program at the DFC. So tell us about that. Uh, so yeah, so so we are part of the 2X program. That is where the investment is being sourced from. And again, you know, because of our vision of being female-led, female-focused, and female-empowered, it's great alignment. Uh, within Uganda, you know, obviously we employ uh, 181 women in extreme poverty, but we're, all, we're also led by a local Ugandan woman, which I'm so excited to kind of say, you know, we made the focused effort of leading from the top. So our um, executive team is led by Victoria Kagundu, who is a local Ugandan woman, uh, lives in, lived in Kampala, trained uh, and educated within Uganda and abroad. And so we're excited to bring that kind of total vision alignment from the top all the way down. Uh, and, and I think it's very much aligned with the 2X agenda as well. And you said, you know, COVID, you've been able to kind of have business continuity during this time. Paint us a picture of what the business looks like post COVID. What do you see on the horizon? Where is growth going to come from and what excites you? Yes, you know, I think for, you know, I've told this to many people, I think COVID has actually unlocked innovation for the company. So we think about when there's a business crisis like this, um, you know, you can make, you have two choices. One, you can just try to survive or second or two, you can really try to thrive and, and position yourself for growth. And we believe we've positioned Ecola for growth post COVID in, in probably three ways. The first is the assortment itself. So we make fine luxury jewelry. Again, that's what makes Ecola very different. We're carried in the, in the top wholesale retailers in the US like Nordstrom, Saks and Neiman Marcus. But we believe that we have a huge opportunity to evolve our assortment beyond just traditional jewelry. So what we found when COVID broke was that we had a, a growing DIY business, do it yourself business, where you create these kits and you make jewelry uh, in your home. And it's a way to connect mothers with daughters, 
friends. And so what we found was those kids became wildly popular because people are staying in their homes and they want activities that not only are fun, but spark hope and generosity. And so we believe that type of product assortment expansion is going to be part of our long-term growth. We're going to continue working uh, in jewelry, expand in DIY and create those immersive experiences with our consumers. And we also see expansion into even more different categories like home decor because we can use the materials coming out of Eastern right. Africa to do that. And so we see ourselves building a lifestyle brand that is focused on mission, focused on impact, and focused on experience. The second thing I would say is that we are moving into e-commerce. I mean, no surprise, while wholesale is a very critical part of our business and what makes Acola so different is being a social enterprise that can sit in the top retailers in the country, uh, we also want to have a growing e-commerce business. So we will be investing significant resources in growing that channel. And, you know, the retail is changing by the minute and consumers want to connect with brands with purpose and they want to do it in a digital space. So we'll be investing in that. And the third thing I would say is that we're going to be moving into international expansion. We want this brand to be a global brand. We believe the mission is global. The mission is relevant for women around the world. And we don't want to just be selling in the U.S. Our dream is to see a cola even be a growing brand within Africa, uh, within the Middle East and Europe. And so we do see expansion in the horizon as well. Thank you, Shiva, for joining. If anyone watching this wants to learn more about a cola, where can they go? They can, they can go right to our site. So our, our, our site is www.acola.co and you can learn more about the mission, the vision of the company, and of course, experience our product as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.